Hey everybody, how's it going? Know Your Gear QA number 100. It's Friday, it's three o'clock. There's already 150 you're waiting. That's awesome. Actually, I already knew you're waiting. I was reading all the comments and actually uh, highlighting them. And 100 episodes, and I still have barely remembered to mute this thing when the show starts. <laughs> I get it like 90% of the time. <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay. Uh, so this is, it's not ironic, but it is ironic that it's the 100th episode, and I have so much stuff. This is the most stuff I've ever had to cover on a show and i've already pinned a ton of great questions so i'm trying to decide why uh you know people join us what to talk about first i think what i want to do is jump right into questions because there's some good questions okay so uh, i know you guys are asking questions right now but there was a couple when you guys are chatting before the show started uh i was actually listening to guitar geek and Chutter kung pao's live show and while i was watching and listening to that i was reading your guys's questions and there was one that really stuck out and i want to talk about it uh, two actually. Uh, so one was lefty Mike. I I'm assuming he's left-handed. <laughs> Anyways, lefty Mike. Uh, Phil, do you think the binding on the neck of a guitar affects the feel and playability on the guitar? Or is it purely cosmetic? No, I do think it, it affects the way the guitar feels. Um, I mean, not every guitar. Can you buy a guitar with binding and without binding and it feel the same? Absolutely. But generally speaking, for me, uh, some of the things I like about binding is it, it's kind of smooth. I mean, you know what I mean? It has a nice feel over the edge. Uh, I prefer it sometimes, just just overall. I like the feel of it. Uh, it's Binding is a strange thing. I don't love the way it looks. I just like the way it feels. It always feels kind of smooth. It doesn't feel uh, the same as wood, obviously. And uh, also, another thing that's nice about binding is, generally speaking, uh, your fret sprout is less because the binding uh, won't constrict in when the wood when the neck shrinks in and the frets kind of don't and they stick out. We call it fret sprout. Uh, the binding kind of holds it all in, but in some extreme cases the binding will crack and stuff. But no, I like it for that. The other question that I loved was uh, flying Hawaiian says, "Hey Phil, I have a Strat and a '65 Princeton Reverb. What overdrive would you recommend?" for uh, around four. He's talking about volume four on the amp for an apartment. And I, I like the question because I play a Strat and I have the 68 Princeton. Uh, and I'll just tell you this, the a couple pedals that I use and why I like them. I like the 68 by Lawrence Petros uh, designs. That's probably my favorite. My second favorite is probably the Wampler Tumnus. And third favorite is the Timmy. And I think of the three, the Timmy is the least expensive, but it's been a while, you know what I mean? Um, looking at my timmy right now it's been a while since i bought the timmy i think i paid 100 bucks for it back in the day they're probably more than that now but it's definitely the least of the three those are three great ones to definitely check out i, I just didn't i don't know what kind of music you're uh, listening to and playing but with that combination i would think those pedals would be very complimentary uh unless you're playing death metal so you never know and then you also put uh you're thinking about subscribing to pedal genie this is the same person uh person by the way flying hawaiian and that was another part i liked uh it says uh, the main worry is the Princeton doesn't have a gain knob. So basically, if you guys don't know what he's talking about, he's talking about Pedal Genie. Pedal Genie is a, uh, you rent pedals. Uh, so what happens is, is you subscribe to it. You put like your 10 pedals you'd like to have from the list of pedals they have. And um, basically, if they have whatever, they, they pick the one they have in stock and they send it to you and then you get to check it out. And then as soon as you're done with it, you send it back. It has like pre uh, labeled return boxes and then they send you another one off your list. So you basically get, and I think you get out like four a month, uh, something like that. I, I've never worked it out. I've never tried it, but I will say this, uh, flying Hawaiian. If you're thinking about doing uh, pedal genie, I would love for you to reach back out to the show. Cause I'd like to know, no, anyone who's ever reviewed that. I thought about checking it out myself. Uh, but I do know this. I asked Lawrence uh, about it and asked him if he reached out to them uh, to carry his pedals so that people could try like Lawrence Petros pedals. And he said he never got a response. So if Flying Hawaiian, you reach out to them, let them know you want LPD pedals there because not because Lawrence is my friend, but because it makes sense that they should get these small, small pedal guys on Pedal Genie because those are the pedals you're never going to get a chance to check out. Who's going to be able to check out his pedals when he makes them one by one by hand? Uh, you know, so something to think about there. And then another one is, an, uh, you know, I th I'm going to just go off the last name. Dolan said, just got engaged. <laughs> if you think guitars are overpriced, what's the deal with jewelry? You know, uh, I love that because this is a funny story. Um, about 
two years ago, I made a video that I can, I'd never put out on YouTube. And what I did is I bought a, a Gibson from a, a store. It's one of my, one of the Gibsons I bought. And, uh, my wife had bought some jewelry, right? She, and, and what I did was I went to a pawn shop and I asked them like the same week. So I bought the guitar, she bought the jewelry and I asked them what they would give us for each one. And they almost would give us nothing for the jewelry. And I was like, this is gonna be the greatest video. What holds more value, a guitar or jewelry? And here's what happened. Three different pawn shops, no one will allow me, uh, give me permission to use the footage I took of them talking. So, but, so, you know, I can't ever show the footage because I don't have permission to, but I can tell you this, all three pawn shops, uh, it was like a, like a $1,500 guitar and it was like a probably $1,200 piece of jewelry. And the jewelry, they want to give us like 150 bucks and the guitar, they were will are willing to give us like $600. Big difference uh, in holding value in that situation. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Where are we going? There's 500 of us. And uh, there's a lot of you guys putting questions. As you know, uh, Blake says, congratulations for the 100th episode. Also, if you guys noticed this week, the big deal, which we talked about last week, is 200,000 subscribers. It seems like a pretty big milestone for a channel. There's a lot of exciting stuff that goes with that. Are we going to do anything exciting today on the show? Yeah, of course. We're going to give some stuff away. Nothing super exciting, but something hopefully super fun. And uh, also, I got to tell you what happened last week that is crazy. Last week, somebody asked me the question, if I could get any Solar guitar, uh, which one would I get? And I said, oh, obviously the yellow one. And uh, interestingly enough... <laughs> so, uh, a couple of you, including my friend Eric, reached out and said, hey, I, I, you can borrow mine to review it. And I would have done that if it wasn't the fact that Ola England reached out to me as well and uh, sent me uh, that orange one. Where am I at? I can't see it on my screen. That guy right there. Look at that. That looks like a, a tangerine orange Solar guitar. It's because it is. Now, here's what's funny about that. I know I said I would have picked yellow. But when I was looking on the, on the website, that metallic tangerine just it looks kind of red. It's blood. It's called blood uh, blood tangerine, tanger, right? Blood orange, like blood. No, I think it's called blood tangerine, but it's like a blood orange. It's reddish orange. It's beautiful. Gonna ruin this already. I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm doing the review of video about next week. I love the guitar. Now, here's why I'm okay with definitely saying that. One, I don't want to like kind of ruin the review. There's gonna be more to the review than just me saying what I think of it. But uh, I will tell you this, I already kind of familiar with the guitars because I used to sell Washburns and I even sold the Ola England Washburn for, and I remember liking it. I just remember not being a big fan of the flat black. And so this is great. It's light. It plays great. But it was just mostly, it's just a huge thank you to Ola, uh, to, uh, for reaching out and saying, Hey, let's, let's, uh, let's get your viewers to see this guitar. So, um, that was just really, really great. And, um, they also made sure we had it by this Friday. So less than a week it, uh, came from Spain. So that's awesome. Uh, if you got, and, uh, and uh, you know what, I should check the label. I'm just pretty sure it came from Spain. I know he's not from Spain, but, uh, I think that's where the guitars get shipped from. So, uh, well, anyways, uh, that was pretty exciting. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's a, that's a pretty, pretty crazy, amazing thing to happen. Uh, so thank you to ola and to you guys all right uh we got questions but what else do we want to do let's see uh okay i'm gonna do this one buck bucky mari buck bookie mari sure <laughs> you guys it's like reading license plates when you're traveling uh it says hey phil what would, would be the easiest way to go about coil splitting a seymour a seymour duncan p rails so I can choose between P90s humbuckers. I like to use, uh, I have a video on it. It's uh, it's one of my first videos. It's the, uh, the, 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 the pickup frame system. Why can't I think what it's called? Oh my goodness. Don't you love that? So, uh, right now somebody's probably typing the answer in. It's called the Steamer Duncan triple shots. See, uh, love the triple shots. Uh, if you're not from there, you know what, in, in we should show this just because it makes the podcast to re, uh, people listening in their car drive go nuts when we're doing this. Cause they can't see what we're talking about. This is the P uh, triple shot. And what's great about this is it's very easy with the P rails. In fact, it 
it works with the PRELs best because these little dip switches you see right here, okay, you can make it to where you switch it to humbucker mode, uh, single coil mode, P90 mode, you name it. It's all wired in. It's a very easy system to install. Uh, $35 is for two of them. So, you know, uh, hold on. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm still going to have to drink water. Uh, anyways, uh, so $35 for two of them is pretty good, and you can wire it up pretty easy. It works really great. I would highly recommend that. I've 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 installed a few myself, and I've always liked them. So, in fact, if I would really not suggest doing P rails if you don't do something like that, because that's what they the P rails are great for. If you guys aren't familiar with the P rails by Seymour Duncan, it's a pickup that has the ability to be a P90, a single coil, or a humbucker, and any variation in between. So, very cool. Very, very innovative uh, pickup in the Seymour Duncan people. Let's see. What else do we got? <laughs> Besides, <laughs> it's moving a little fast. Uh, all right, hold on. Sometimes I'm trying to... I'm trying to read some of these questions. Uh, yeah, see, somebody said get the triple shot. That's uh, exactly. I agree. Um, Metal Dad says, do you get to keep the solar? Um, you know, I don't know, uh, but I will say this. I actually, what happened was Ola reached out. I'll just tell you, cause I'm pretty transparent about this stuff. Ola reached out and said, Hey, let me send you the guitar. And, uh, he'd like to send it to the guitar to, to, ch to, to, you know, review and stuff. And, um, uh, and to be honest with you, when he reached out to me, I had already that night after the live show went on the website and started kind of drooling about it and to be honest uh, tallman guitars carries them and i thought well maybe i could reach out to tallman and maybe tallman will give me like you know some kind of deal or something because you know i have a good relationship with them and something and uh, that'll help you know kind of make it easier to to do it for a review and i kind of was already thinking i really want the orange one and so ola said hey we'll send you out for review and i said you know to be honest i'd like to buy one and um i don't know he was pretty uh they all he just said give me your address so we'll see here's what i can tell you i'm keeping it <laughs> if they leave it with me, I'm keeping it. And if they don't leave it with me, I'm buying it. So either way, I, I, I like it that much. How about that? That just makes it easier. So, uh, in fact, I like it the way it sits. Uh, I may change out the pickups, but I don't know. I don't know yet. I really like it. I don't like to make decisions about changing on guitars until I've had them for a while because I like it. And to be honest with you, there's no reason to logically change the pickups other than, you know, I have a lot of cool pickups that I can stick in guitars. So uh vintage six string said congratulations hitting the century mark uh live shows yeah i'm excited about that let's talk about what we're going to do for the live show a couple things we'll do this and that way i can check off some announcements too a couple episodes ago we talked about yo-yos stephanie my friend stephanie made me some yo-yos and you guys said i said i don't know if you guys would want yo-yos and you guys said yeah so let me cross this off the list we got yo-yos <laughs> hey, she even put my signature on the back uh and, and that was nice because uh, I don't know how she did that, but it's uh, <laughs> I think she probably took it off some screenshot of my signature out there. But anyways, um, uh, she asked me if what I wanted on the backside. And I said, just put the Yo-Yo Factory logo or something. I, I'm not sure what to pick. And then uh, they did this, which just made it cooler. So Yo-Yos, how this works. There's a link in the description. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to give away a couple Yo-Yos today. So don't buy one until you may win one. Right, we have something to give away, but uh, how that works is nine ninety nine for the yo yo. It's ten bucks, and it comes with two uh, of the Know Your Gear stickers, the neon sign stickers, and then there's shipping. Uh, and uh, and it's a limited run. And by limited run, here's what I did: I bought more than what I think you guys would buy. I have them right now, so when you order them, my son is going to have to. <laughs> package them up my wife already checked the the weights and the envelopes we shipped some as a family got the ideas everything we figured it all out and uh long story short they're here so it's not gonna be something you you buy on reverb uh if you click the link down below and wait for um the only thing i gotta say just in case some of you guys haven't seen it on patreon if you're a patron member please do not buy them from here there's something different for the patron members so just be aware of that um anyways uh uh but uh anyways that's how you do it. We'll give some away. And if you don't win a couple of these today on the show, you can buy them. And how I plan to do this is, I don't know, I'll leave it up for like a week or so, maybe the month. I'm not sure. Uh, so <laughs> if you want one, we'll we'll have one. We'll do it for a limited run. But like I said, I can't imagine uh, we don't have enough. I, I bought definitely a lot more than 
what I thought you guys would order just to have them. I, I wanted them. So everybody seems to like yo-yos. Seems to be a thing. Uh, and uh, who doesn't love yo -yos? I gotta be. I gotta admit, I've been playing with probably taking away some of my guitar time playing yo-yo. <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, and then, oh, okay. BJ uh, Danell says, are the stickers going back online? Yeah, I'll put them back online. What I do with the stickers, I put them on, on the reverb site and we sell a bunch. And then uh, what happens is, is uh, I, I, my my wife and my son, they ship those stickers out. And sometimes like my wife goes out of town town or something happens and I take them down. That's what that is. Cause some of you guys ask why, you know, are they coming back? It's not that they're limited or anything. Um, it's just, I don't want you waiting any longer than you have to. And I, I you know what I mean? Uh, and I help put out the stickers, but I'm, I'm really pretty useless when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, uh, I, it doesn't take a lot for me to have other stuff to do and I just, I can't get to it. So, uh, all right, hold on a second. What is it? Uh, more questions. <laughs> hey, Johnny Bean. Johnny Bean's here. I saw um, Lawrence is here doing some shout outs. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, oh. That's cool. BJ, uh, BJ, uh, Danil says, did you know that your guitar sage is interested in doing a collaboration video with you? Uh, no, but, uh, well, I'll index it right here, but also I will reach out to him. I like that channel a lot. Uh, uh, he's like another channel that came in my feeds and I've been watching him for a while. So yeah, I'll definitely reach out. That'd be fun. I like doing stuff like that. The other announcement, I'm going to try to do some announcements. I know there's some questions pending and stuff. Like I said, I promise to get to everything. Um, we talked about the Ola signature guitar, which I'm very excited about. We talked about yo-yos. We talked about 100 episodes and 200,000 subscribers. But what we didn't talk about is the song of the week. So obviously because of the flu slash Nam, I didn't do song of the week. Some of you guys asked about that. I'm going to tell you what the song of the week is. It's already in the link in the description. It's uh, I did it. I did Neil Young. And it's uh, out on the weekend because that's a great song. If you guys don't know it, I, I'm trying to pick stuff that's you know kind of fun. A little bring some of some of us older fans, bring it back in. Some of the younger fans, introduce it to them. But it's Justin Guitar teaching it, and I liked his version of how he taught it. And so the link is to his uh, video on how to play it. And then, of course, uh, like all of you, hopefully, that are doing this with me, I will learn it this week, uh, like we've learned the other two songs. And I always, uh, what I do, so you guys know, as soon as I get the song down, to some degree, uh, I put a video clip on Instagram to show you guys that I learned the song. And plus, it's really for me, so I can look back at, at the end of this year when I look back and go, those are all the songs I learned, and a little video thing of me doing it so I can remember uh, something to do this year. If you guys can't tell between the thing I did with Larry, the thing I'm doing, I did with Melissa on the uh, sharp my axe. And of course this stuff with the lesson, uh, you know, things, uh, trying to make the, the channel that was like kind of the new year's resolution to make the channel more music based, maybe, you know, take our love of gear and make sure that we always remember that it's also about music and gear is fun, but it's not the only thing. Uh, there's more to do with your time in life than buy some pedals. Although I'm sure some of the pedal guys would disagree with me. <laughs> uh, and to be, I'm not going to lie. I'd be, I'd be hard pressed if I didn't just to, uh, you know, admit that I'm obviously buying pedals too. Uh, Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Stephanie said, Hey, Phil. Yeah. Yo-yos. By the way, Stephanie, uh, I'll put a link cause I'll index it right now. Stephanie was in a Rob Chapman's video, uh, because she made Rob Chapman a yo-yo and, uh, and, uh, you know, I just realized she's making us all yo-yos, not, you know, what does that mean? No, I'm just kidding, we're all yo-yos. Anyways, uh, I'll put a link to that video. It was a great video. It was his Nam sum up video and she's in it doing some cool yo-yo tricks, uh, which is cool. So just, uh, just something to make you guys feel like something to aspire to because it's, uh, she's an amazing yo-yo. Is that a yo-yoist? Is there a yo-yoist? Oh, she's going to have to correct me. Right. I don't know if I'm a guitarist. And there's bassist and dr well, they're not drumists, drummers, yo yoers. Hmm. So somehow this that bit isn't seem funny, but I'd like to know the answer. Uh, Sean, hey Sean Tubbs. Uh, if you guys don't know Sean Tubbs' channel, you guys are 
sorely, sorely not treating yourself. Uh, Sean is one of the most amazing guitar players out there. He's a great channel. And so Sean says, hey, digging the Sharpen My Axe stuff. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. Uh, yeah, I, I have a bunch of them coming out and I'm trying to kind of expand them. Uh, the one I did with Melissa was great. It was a long process. Uh, I told, I said, it, I think in the video, it took two months, uh, to do it. That's true. It took two months that video. It's so funny how videos work that the video with Melissa took two months to actually get it all done. Took almost 12 hours of editing, <laughs> right? Uh, cause there was just, uh, it was two, six hour days of editing because, uh, she had made so much great footage. And then of course, you know, I had to do my cuts, cut ins and stuff. Um, but also to be honest with you, I've been working on that video since June of last year is the one I met Melissa. And so you guys know, I want to talk about that. Melissa's on my list too. the sharp my axe, a couple things that are interesting. Some questions I thought on that, uh, sharp my axe that uh, were great questions. And I want to answer them first was uh, a lot of people asked, does she get to keep all that stuff? Absolutely. She look at all the work she did. She, she deserves it. The, you know, uh, obviously if she would have got that stuff given to her and she would have fixed up her guitar. That would have been a cool prize. But to be honest with you, she had to do all this work. She had to, you know, she, it was not a free, uh, it was not free stuff. She had to, uh, uh, agree to video, you know, video her progress and put herself out there. You know, you know, you never know what kind of beating you're going to get on the internet. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so, uh, yeah, so those companies stepped up and, uh, and, uh, let her have that stuff, which is great. I'm very, uh, thankful that, uh, Graph, uh, Graph Tech and Stu Mac uh, did that. And I'm thankful that Jamstack uh, also sponsored the video. That was really cool of Jamstack. By the way, we're not done with Jamstack yet. If you guys saw that video, you saw there was a cool $250 Bluetooth amp from Jamstack. We're giving that away today for the 100th uh, episode and uh, and 200,000 subscribers. So we'll be, that's one of the things we're going to give away. So we'll get to that. And uh, But the other question that I thought was interesting was, uh, somebody asked, obviously, did she keep that stuff? But also, uh, what was the other question? <laughs> I got sidetracked. Uh, they were asking, um, oh, how how did she get picked? That was the question. And I thought I would tell you guys because I love stories like this. She got picked for that video because she sent me, uh, she didn't even send a request for Sharp My Axe. She sent me just a simple picture of her polishing the frets on her guitar and she said in the email, she sent the picture and she said, thank you for the videos. I learned to polish the frets on my guitar and I'm learning to fix my guitar slowly. And so I responded in kind to the email with, you know, if you'd like to learn more, I have an idea. And I kind of just tossed it out to see what she said. And she's, so she responded with, sure. And I said, okay. So she was crazy enough to do this video. So, uh, so we, I thank Melissa again for that. That was awesome. Okay, so I know some of you guys did some of those. Hold on a second. Questions. I don't want to miss the super chats either because uh, those get pinned over here. Uh, Bruce just did a super chat for no reason. Thanks, Bruce. I appreciate it. So did uh, so did Dagger, Dagger, Dagger. It's like Dagger G Blue. Am I saying that right? It looks like Dagger Blue, but there's an extra G in there. And then BK also did it too. Thanks, guys. That's uh, really cool of you guys. And then uh, Mid Guardian said, best all-around two-channel amp with effects under $1,000 for blues, country, American, uh, Americana, and rock. Thinking Vox AC15, Orange Rocker 15, PV Classic 30. Uh, I like all three of those. Best all-around two-channel amp for under 1000 bucks. <sighs> You know what's sad is <laughs> I hate I hate these kind of questions. Just I mean I'm glad you asked it, but I'm always hate them because I'm like, you know, it's always tough to pick these amps because I like all three of those amps, but I, for some reason I would pick the plas uh, the PV Classic 30. I've always liked the PV Classic 30s, and that's just based on what you 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 said. Uh, you know your choices. Me personally though, I would pick a Fender amp. So for a thousand bucks and so you know if you're looking for a with an amp with effects under and effects i mean i think you mean like reverb and stuff under a thousand bucks uh, you know what i was really impressed with the amp show with the the bass breaker 30 the 30 watt amp that fender put out something really cool to check out in that so it's hard to recommend an amp i haven't really thoroughly played but i liked all the other bass breakers other than there's some shortcomings each one had but it looks like they really fixed that this time with the 30 watt and uh it's 850 or 899 somewhere on there so you know it's under that see and dennis is saying the supersonic so the problem dennis is this i would definitely say the supersonic the supersonic is one of my favorite amps 
from Fender. Um, I always tell everybody the clean is not the best Fender clean and the distortion is not the best distortion. It's really the supersonic for me is not about being the best amp. It's just really versatile. It works good. And, uh, you know, and I like the way it looks. <laughs> <laughs> that helps, right? It's a good looking app too. Um, but I think they're like twelve hundred bucks now. They're pretty pricey. Now you can find them used under a thousand bucks all day long. Uh, not any problem. And ironically, you can get the sixty watt version for less than you can get the twenty watt version. And uh, I have mixed uh, feelings about that. I like the twenty uh, watt or twenty two watt versions clean better than the sixty watts clean. Um, but I like having the vintage thirty and the sixty watt. That's what I have in my. Uh, my Supersonic 22 right now, I took out their Eminence designed Fender speaker and I have a Vintage 30 in there. I just like the Vintage 30 with that amp. Sounds good. It's not too dark uh, and it has so, uh, takes, you know, has good distortion. It's sort of crunchy and, and not fizzy. I lost. It's funny. Every time I change screens, they keep taking away my community. I have a little screen that keeps all my, my, my chats. Uh, Jim... Browning did a super chat for no reason. That's, I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you. But if you have a question or anything, you can always ask that too. Uh, ha, 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 Krang89. He says, how did you get super glue off paint off the guitar, uh, off the paint? So what he's asking me is on the Sharpen My Axe with uh, Tyler Larson's uh, Paul Reed Smith, where he got super glue on the front of the guitar, removed it. And then that video, I said, I wouldn't tell you guys how I did that. That's actually not true that I won't tell you guys. I just didn't know how to make a video that wasn't dangerous. Like, I don't want to give you a piece of information and then you guys get it wrong. Um, so, uh, you know what? Uh, I will. I'll tell you what I'll do. As you guys seen, I'm pretty crazy. Like on the uh, the Sharp Max on Melissa, I just took a neck and started gluing, uh, super gluing the nut in, trying to break it out to simulate what she was, her problem was going to be. Um, you know what? That's probably a cool idea. I don't know why, but it would be a cool idea on a video. Maybe I'll put some super glue on a guitar. I, you know, I have some guitars downstairs uh, in the shop that are like, I don't want to say junker guitars, but they're guitars, obviously. Like, you know, they, they're just bodies and parts and stuff. And maybe I can, re you know, show you guys by doing that. Um, and uh, and maybe make the video thorough enough to where I feel that uh, by doing it, I'm not arming you with just enough information that you could probably damage your guitar. So there's a lot of techniques on how to remove super glue off the finish, but the one I've used uh, in the past uh, many times over worked, and that's why when uh, Tyler was like, "Hey, I got super glue on my guitar," because uh, he sent me an email uh, in, when he sent me the guitar and said, "I got super glue on it." And I'm sure there's nothing you can do, and I'm like, "Actually, I've done that before many times, so I can take it off." Um, Hey, Sean Brooks says he put the guitar in the microwave for 30 seconds on high. Yeah, I don't recommend you do that at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, it's fun. Yeah, it's 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 funny. It's not a crazy hard. It's not that the technique's hard. It's really so you guys know, I'm just using like absinthe. I'm, I'm using like na nail polish uh, remover to do it. There's just a certain way you can do it to make sure you don't damage the finish on a guitar. So that's what I'm saying. And, and I'm not even sure that it would actually have. That's why I want to. Here's what I want to do. So you guys know. And then we'll, we'll go to the next subject. I'm not going to do a video just to show you guys. I'll see if I can ruin the finish on the guitar. That's the best way I feel like I've done some videos in the past. If you guys know this, where I purposely try to do things to instruments so that you can feel confident with how far you can go. You know, that was the whole thing with Melissa. She told me she was deathly afraid of doing soldering, which is why I wanted to do the video because I know that some other people are afraid of soldering irons. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, what's, what's a better way to show somebody how to do something than to, to execute it. So on the, on the, on the finish, I'm not really concerned with showing you guys how to do the finish. I'm concerned with where's the safety point where you can damage it. And I've actually never pushed it. I've never tried to damage a guitar doing the method. So what I'm saying is I'll do the video and then, uh, I'll, I'll try and, and, and damage the guitar, you know, the body and see, so you guys can see how far do you go. It's kind of like when I did the sharp of my ax with the broken neck. I put a lot of pressure on my Gibson neck and a lot of you guys freaked out and trust me, I was freaked out too when I made the video, but I did that because again, I figured, you know, this is the best way to illustrate, you know, something is to do it. It's a great, it's always a great idea to show people what, what, what a horrible thing or good thing can happen if you do it. Um, uh, WS said, what happened to the Crimson guitar kit guitar? It's right behind me. It's right there. The beer caster. It's right there. It's, uh, so there you go. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Okay. You know what? Let's talk about some giveaway stuff. Um, okay. So stuff we're giving away on the show. We're going to give away, uh, let's say five yo-yos and I got 20 sticker packs to give away. The sticker packs have one of each of the stickers. Uh, these are pretty easy for me. You know, you can just put them in an envelope and mail them out to you guys. So, uh, the sticker packs are going to be pretty fun. Here's how that works. All I want you to do is, uh, and it won't be collecting your uh, email addresses or doing any funky stuff, no selling it to a third party or nothing wacky. Just go ahead. And if you guys are interested, email to, um, uh, ask know your gear and the subject is uh, stickers and the first 20 people that do it i'll i'll send you a response uh just asking you for your address and then we'll ship them out to you there you go <laughs> music 72 said phil is a yo-yo yeah i've been called worse <laughs> today probably uh so so there you go that's how i'm going to do it the sticker packs is easy uh that's easy enough right so send me a thing we'll put the two stickers and and to be honest with you, if I have the new Know Your Gear picks, we have picks to give away too. If I have those in time, I'll put them in the things too. I just don't want to wait too long to do them. And I don't want to promise something I don't have yet. I'm waiting for Steve Clayton picks to show up. Uh, so that's that easy part. There you go. And you know what we can do next is the next. Huh, I won't even say what it is. I'm not going to say it. Let's just continue on. And then that way. Uh. Oh, speaking of winners, let's do this real quick too. Um, since we're jo jumping all over the place. I want to talk about, so you guys know, we had two winners. I'm going to share it with you right now for the contest. I'm very excited about that. Uh, here you go. Screen share. We had two winners for the contest. You know the contest where you guys submit the picture of yourself, whether you had it, your shirt or I know your gear stuff, or if you just wrote know your gear on there. Uh, wh what happens right here is Daryl, the one with the dump trucks. That's your guys' vote. You voted him in. I gave you some choices. You picked him. He won the awesome pedal board. Uh, the pedal board will be shipped to him on Monday. I've already talked to Daryl. We're already in, in sync with what to do. And there'll be a review of the pedal board. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm basically done with the video. I just don't want to launch it, but uh, obviously soon because I'm sure he'll want to see it too. And then we did a random pool. Like I said, if you guys just entered, I don't care if you were in the picture or not, random pool. This was the random picture. It was Guinea Rockland uh, won the random entry. He's getting the, uh, or maybe she, I don't know. Uh, they're getting the mini pedal board, uh, which was just because like I said, I knew some of you guys didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, you know, I didn't want to make it all a competition about how good you can make a picture. So if you just sent any picture, you were entered in that contest. So I just want to let you know, I got that stuff done. That would have been done and announced before, but I got the flu and then the NAMM show. So that's how we ended up here. So there you go. I just want you to let you guys know that I, I got that and we're, we got that out and I'm excited about that. Thank you to everyone who entered. That was great. Like I said, that was more for me than you guys. Uh, just because I think it's cool to see all the stuff you guys come up with. It's a nice way to see the community. You guys get to see me. I never get to see you. So sometimes it's cool when I get to see you guys. Um, all right. All right. What else do we got? We have, you know what? Let's do a question and then that will make sense. I'm going to do one right now. Okay, here we go. The next question. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, just so you guys know the number ahead of time is two uh for the uh super chats so you guys know okay so and this will make sense in a minute it says neil neil says hey phil congrats on i have a custom 36 coupe i love that because james brown designed that amp and james brown's an amp genius uh which uh has a teeny type rattle oh i spoke too soon <laughs> on some notes i uh, should have replaced the power and the uh, preamp tubes also what branded tubes for bluesy type tones also your opinion on uh, hand wired versus PCB Vox AC30. Okay, great. Uh, so easy enough question on the on the tingy type rattle. Um, yeah, that sounds like a kind of maybe maybe a microphonic kind of tube thing. You can do what's called the chopstick test, where you take a wooden chopstick or a plastic stick, uh, just nothing metal and nothing hard that can crack glass. Lightly tap on the tubes while the amp is on. Easy enough, right? And if you hit one of the tubes and hear sound, that's probably where the sounds come from. That's a good old school trick that does does the fixes it 50% of the time, fixes it, in other words, helps you detect the issue. That way you know what tube to specifically get. Um, and but listening to it, it could be as simple as a tube. That sounds like what it is. Uh, what's great about tube amps is majority of the time, 80% of the time, the problem is the tubes. So I would uh, look at doing that. Uh to for tubes, I, 
you know, I'm not a tube guy. There are players out there that are just into tubes. You know, what tube does what? And what. I like JJ's because they're cheap and they're good. I use, sometimes use them or electro harmonics because, again, they're cheap and they're good. I just personally just don't like groove tubes, even though they're Fender owned tubes. And I love Fender. For some reason, those tubes, I just keep having problems with them. It seems to be something consistent, and I keep getting people sending me issues with their groove tubes. So stay away from the groove tubes uh, is my suggestion. Uh, but I'm sure some people are out there going to have different you know, experiences. But my experience with groove tubes is not so awesome, so I can't recommend them. Uh, JJ's for sure. And then on hand-wired -word, versus PCB, you know, I don't care. I know that's a thing. <laughs> right i know and i've heard it all i've heard it from not even uh you know the youtube uh community and stuff you know the 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 viewers and the comments but just ant builders right everybody's got you know their their take on it you know pcb is is very consistent hand wired so magical because all this magic can happen what i've learned is that when an amp is a, a, a good designed amp it just sounds good that helps right sometimes and it's also tough because sometimes when i play amps that are hand wired they do sound great but they're also because they're very expensive using very high-end components you know what i mean so i guess the adage i would use the logic i would use is if i took a hand if i took a bunch of cheap parts and hand wired them i wouldn't expect because i hand wired them the amp is good i think a lot of times the reason hand wired stuff is good is because they use better components so it's a you know so if you use good components in the pcb it's probably going to create the same effect that's just my personal opinion. But the main reason I say that for myself is I have a ton of amps and uh, that are, and some are hand wired and some are PCB, and I have no allegiance to any of them. Like I never go, man, these hand wires just blow the other ones away. There's just certain things I like about each one. I do like a little bit of mixture though. I've seen it. Uh, you know, a good example is my Archon. It's a little bit of mix of both. It's not a hand wired amp, but it's not a P, you know, PCB board kind of slapped together and something a mix, and that's a good good amp so so think about that one but the reason i said two earlier was neil neil is you won a yo-yo i'm gonna pick five people for questions i'll take two super chats but you already have to be super chats uh, already locked so don't super chat me right now because you want a yo-yo i already picked the two but however the three next three questions i picked they're not super chats we'll give yo-yos too uh so neil super easy man if you could just send me an email to ask know your gear uh, and, uh, send me the, uh, just let me know that you're Neil and I'll send you out your yo-yo. The next question is going to be, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do it. It's dagger, dagger, dagger G blue said, yes, you said it correct. It's dagger G blue, man. You know what? You just want a yo-yo that, <laughs> so that's how it works. Uh, dagger G blue, same thing, man. Send me an email to ask, know your gear. Put in, the uh, put in the comments question from the show or just questions, subjects, so I know what I'm looking at. And uh, give me your address and I'll send you out a yo-yo. Uh, it says, I was trying to ask about the olive green Strat. I love it. And could you, and could we please get a closer look at it? Yeah, yeah. Did I ever never do a review of that? Oh, you know what? Maybe I can't. Oh, there it is. I'm going to say, ta-da. Uh, it is stock in every way, except for the fact that I changed the pickguard to black. And I did a review of, of a guitar like this. Hold on a second. Let me put it in the rack. This rack over here. Ta-da. There we go. All right. Uh, and that's probably why I never reviewed that one, because I, I reviewed one that was olive green that had three single quills. And uh, it was great. And then when I ordered mine, I decided to do humbuckers. But I love that guitar. Yeah, I love it, too. Olive green. Just kind of cool. It's out there. It's different. It's not the flashy look. Subdued. So I'm glad you got one, too, and you like it. And then uh, SG Flying V says, EVH US Signature Wolfgang, EVH Shark Thoughts. Uh, I like the EVH Signature Wolfgangs. They are, they're great. Uh, some of the best guitars I've ever played, for sure. Some of the best sounding guitars I've ever played. Uh, kind of pricey, but, you know, that's what, you know, American guitars are. And uh, I have a signature Wolfgang uh, made in Mexico. I like it. Uh, that's what I ended up doing for myself was that price point. Really kind of want to get one of those Japanese ones. Remember when they did the EVH specials made in Japan? I had one for a short time. It was very short-lived. Uh, and, uh, I should have kept it, you know, and the reason I got rid of it is when they switched to the EVH, uh, made Mexico line, uh, they offered more colors and I was like, oh, I should get a fancier color. And, you know, sometimes 
you know, woulda, coulda. But stainless steel frets on those. If you get the EVH specials made in Japan, they have uh, stainless steel frets. They're really good. So there you go. The EVH Shark, I, I didn't, I don't know. I'm not very excited about it because I, I think you got to be more of an Eddie Van Halen fan than I am to appreciate the shark. Plus stuff like that's weird to me because like I understand what they're replicating, but to me, I know he took a drill and he like chopped out that section and it's all hacked out. But in the replica, the replica they made, it's all painted in there. Maybe that's cooler. I don't know. You know what? You, if you're an EVH fan, Eddie Van Halen fan, a diehard one, let you know. Put in the comments. Let me know. Is that cool? <laughs> right? I, I don't know. So, so, so I, you know, there's so many Eddie Van Halen guitars. That's what it is. Like I love them, but geez, there's so many. After a while, I'm like, just get crazy. Um, uh, RJ Van says I have a Made in Japan EVH special, and it's great. Yeah, did the. the they were some of the best ones, especially for the money, even though they keep going up every every couple months when you go online. Look, they're going you see them less and less and they're going for a little bit more each time. So there we go with that. That was cool. We talked about that. We uh, we got three more yo-yos to give away. OK. Uh, all right. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to find a question. <laughs> yeah, Dennis. Okay, this ties in. And Dennis, I'm going to count it. So Dennis, uh, Dennis Briat. You know who I'm talking about, Dennis. <laughs> Go ahead and send me askknowyourgear at gmail.com. Go ahead and send me a uh, question winner, Dennis, and then I'll, I'll uh, send you a yo-yo uh so that's three we've given and uh anyways and it said uh he said uh e evh said he ruined that guitar by cutting out that section I, I read the same article there was a guitar world article or one of the guitar magazine articles i read a long time ago same thing i agree right it was a it was a destroyer right and he and then he thought it'd be cool and he and he recorded it it's like some 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 of the important songs were recorded with that uh guitar and then he ruined it by putting the drill in it. Yeah, it's like I said, it's the weirdest thing. I understand, like I said, but to me, that guitar is more than just someone who's interested in uh, guitars. Let me give you an example. It's like, uh, to me, that guitar is, it, it, it for me, goes past just being, even though I'm wearing an EVH shirt today, it goes past just being an EVH fan, which I am, to being a EVH super fan to get that guitar that, you know what I mean? Which is not what I would uh, proclaim myself. I'm an Eddie Van Halen fan, just not a, a super fan. You know what I'm saying? You can be a super fan. I'm super fans of stuff and then fans of others. Uh, and that guitar is just too, too like, you know, specific. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. Uh, the next question is, Let's see. Hold on. I know I hate it when I go quiet. Um, <laughs> Dennis says, I want to, in full disclosure, I'm wearing a, a Van Halen necklace right now. Well, I'm wearing a Van Halen shirt. This is my Van Halen uh, Dickie shirt. Uh, so, yeah, because we're, I think everyone's, well, I want to say everyone. That's too, that's too bold of a blanket statement. But man, I bet you if you took 10 guitar players if it's seven out of 10 weren't van halen fans it's like hendrix it's just because even if you're not a fan of the music you know what it inspired and you know how it's affected other musicians you know what i mean like i'm a huge nuno bittencourt fan and he's a huge van halen fan so by the transit of properties i just become a van halen fan that way that's the way i look at it um so i don't know or at least that's the way i try to figure out how to win an argument <laughs> So, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, okay, hold on a second. Hold on, my computer sending me stuff. All right, uh, where we go? Uh, we need some more questions. Okay, uh, Frank and the fam. Yeah, you're a yo-yo winner. So Frank and the fam, send that to, send me, ask New Year gear, Frank and the fam, yeah, in the subject title so I can get you out one of the yo-yos, the limited edition ones. And it says, hey, buddy, quick question. Would you change out the tuning machines on an 07 Fender Deluxe Player Stratocaster to locking tuners? The answer is yes, I would do that because I use locking tuners on 99% of my guitars because, and I've said this before, a lot of people think locking tuners is about stability and tuning. Stability and tuning is the nut. 
that's my biggest thing, which is why we did again the sharp max with the nut. We're going to be doing a lot of nut videos uh, coming up, and the reason is is because every guitar player I know complains about stability and tuning, and every guitar player I know fixes it by the tuning keys, and nobody that I know that's a master luthier thinks that's the right way to fix stability and tuning. Stability and tuning usually has to do with the nut. That is where the biggest problems come from, aside from maybe if you have tremolo and such systems, but but really it's a nut issue. Um, lo so locking keys do not fix stability and tuning for the most part, although they can help. The, um, the reason why you get locking keys is because they cut the restring time in half, if not, they cut, set, they cut it down to 20% of the time to do restring. And if you're like me, you probably don't want to restring guitars, but I like the sound of new strings. Now, if you like the sound of old strings, well, then don't buy locking keys because you're going to run your strings forever. Everywhere. You know, I have friends that play. I Actually, I'll pick on one friend. I have one friend in particular. He's had the same strings on a guitar for like 15 years. I'm not, that's not even a joke. <laughs> right? When they break, he'll replace them. He loves them. Me, one string start going dead, I don't like them so much. But a lot of players, when strings, you know, new strings are bright and new players don't like new strings. So, uh, something to think about. So that, but I would replace them. Sure, why not? They're they're relatively inexpensive, comparatively speaking, and uh, there's something that if you install on the guitar, uh, you can retrofit back out. That was another segue. That's a good segue into the Sharp Max with Melissa too. Another question that came up was, you know, why would you put, uh, $150 tuning keys on a guitar she paid $100 for. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Everybody's got to come to their own decisions when it comes to their money and why they make the decisions they make. I can only tell you something to think about. Uh, the tuning keys that uh, were added to Melissa's guitar, the pickups that were added to Melissa's guitar, and the uh, saddles that were added to Melissa's guitar, all can be removed. And all, if she bought a left-handed American Strat today, all those things could come off that guitar, be put on the American Strat, upgrade that American Strat. She could put all the old components back on the guitar. The only thing that's not going to come back off is the nut. And actually, she could swap that out too. I just don't think you, I wouldn't do that because it's just not worth the time uh, that you spend. Um, and so that's the whole point. I like to look at parts uh, when it comes to upgrading, upgrading guitars. If, if you keep the old parts, you can always swap them back out. It's not like you're you're losing the money by putting them into the guitar. You're improving your guitar, and of course, you can take the parts with you. The only problem is, of course, if you buy, she, you know, she buys a Les Paul next, <laughs> right? Um, but then she could sell the parts off individually, right? That's it. But what here's what's really amazing. But the knowledge she has now, that's that's with her forever, man. You can't take that away from her. That's great. Um, uh, Ken want to be says, Phil, what's up with the GNL guitar? I, I don't know, man. <laughs> so I tried, um, so, you know, I reached out to GNL before the NAM show asked about where their booth was. Uh, you know, I tried to get an appointment with them to maybe do some video content. Uh, they didn't get back with me. Uh, so I don't know what to tell you with the GNL guitar. Uh, like I said before, if they make it and they ship it, uh, well, if they make it, I'll pay for it. Then they can ship it. I'll review it. We'll talk about it. Uh, they don't make it. I don't have to pay for it, obviously, because I didn't make it. So I don't know. So there you go. It's uh, it's a pretty simple thing. I don't know what to tell you with that. Um, they, uh, uh, they're nice guys. I just, you know, maybe they're too busy. Not sure. Um, and I could have chased him down a little harder at the damn show, but it was really tough because I reached out to him and said, Hey, let's try to get some, you know, where's your booth. Let's try to get something going. They said, they get back to me. I never got back. They never got back to me. It's hard for me to chase them down because I had two dozen companies trying to get me to come by their booth. In fact, there's probably even companies watching right now that asked me to stop by their booths, booth, including Houston Kittner. And I didn't get time to go to Hughes and Kittner's booth. Hughes and Kittner even asked me to go to dinner and pay for dinner. I didn't have time to do that. So it's really tough to say no to somebody who's being so gracious as to obviously buy you dinner and then try to chase somebody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's so you have to you have to draw your line somewhere. So that's what happened to GNL. So I don't know. Like I said, still like GNL guitars. Love the guys there. We'll see what happens. I I don't know. If it ever they ever contact me and the guitar is done, I will definitely uh, get it. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. So like I said, and it could be just, they're busy. I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's a reality of business, man. They're not, like I said, they're not a huge shop. They got to do a lot. They got to wear a lot of hats and do a lot of things. So, and that's another reason why I don't feel compelled to really kind of keep on them 
because there's a difference between, you know, when you keep on a bigger company, it's easy. It's just like, hey, just don't forget me. Don't forget me kind of thing. But for them, I could be stopping them from getting stuff during the day. You know, that takes takes care of paying bills. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, obviously helping them do stuff on this channel is good marketing. But marketing only matters if, you know, you're getting product out there and stuff. So we'll see. Um, so there you go. There's the answer with that. Who who asked that question? Uh, you know what? That uh, sorry, Ken wannabe. Yeah, Ken wannabe. Uh, what's that? Is that number five? Yeah, it's number five. All right, Ken wannabe. Go ask know your gear dot. Uh, sorry, ask know your gear at gmail dot com. Uh, put a uh, question answered. What what question it was, and I'll send you out a yo yo, man. Thank you, uh, for that. And how are we doing on time? We're doing good. And uh, I'm. This is me talking to. Well, I think and try to read these, some of these questions. Uh, Bella Chai. Hey, Bella Chai. It's good to hear from you. It says, congrats on 100 episodes. Thank you. No, uh, no, do I get, now do I get a small back skid marks of lower? <laughs> I don't know what you're saying, man. <laughs> I think you're celebrating too early. <laughs> this is okay. Uh, do now, no, do I get small back skid marks off lower? Oh, how? Don't you love autocorrect? Okay, that's got to be what it is. It says, how do I get small uh, back skid marks off the lower bout edge of my EJ Strat? Well, your EJ Strat is lacquer, uh, which is great. That's one of the cool things about the Eric Johnson Strat. It's a lacquer body uh, to get the sm uh, skid marks off. I would I would not recommend doing it yourself. <coughs> Excuse me. I would take it to a professional shop. They could buff that out. That's what's great about lacquer. It all comes out. So they can take that out. Uh, and if you don't know anybody qualified... Uh, you can email me, let me know, and I can do my best to ask around your area because there's, you know, I usually know somebody somewhere, but that's what I would do. You can get it out. That's what's great about lacquer. So, uh, okay. Jim Jeff says he wants to trade his HR, his Hot Rod Deluxe tube amp for Katana Artist. My thoughts? Well, you know, it's a, it's to me, I would prefer the Hot Rod Deluxe because I like the Hot Rod Deluxe more than the Katana Artist. It's just because I like the clean tones, the fatter kind of tubiness of it. But I mean, I understand it. To me, that's a question, not so much of quality though. That's a question of, of usage. Do you want a great tube amp? Because I like the Hot Rod Deluxe, you know. Do you want a good tube amp that is a great pedal platform and it sounds great, but it's just one thing, which is a good clean tone because the HR... Uh, Deluxe's reverb is not amazing. The Katana Artist, though, is versatile and has all this stuff. So you have to decide for yourself. Do you want versatility, right? And that's, like I said, I constantly make this decision all the time. And I'm, I don't claim to make the, the right one. I constantly will use an amp, knowing quite well that I can get a better result with some digital stuff. But there's just something that I like, the interaction. I like sometimes fighting the tube amp. You know what I mean? I like... <laughs> So, uh, you know what I mean? I like kind of like it's it's a it's not the easiest thing in the world. So you got to decide. So, uh, but if it was me, I'd stick with the Hot Rod Deluxe. So, because you know why? Here's why. Me, I know for a fact you could get some kind of modeling pedal to shove in front of that tube amp that is going to do what the Katana Artist does. And. But again, the decision's finally, uh, you know, is always on you. Those are just my insights. James Biles says, base, question mark, question mark, base, how low can you go? <laughs> Squire CVSS Jaguar or Fender Mustang. Uh, okay, so he's talking about the short scale Jaguar. Uh, Jaguar, I did a video on that. I like that one. Or the Fender. Looking to mess around with a short scale or PJ configuration already set up with a few 34 inch scales. Um, I've, I, uh, I had the Fender Mustang base. Mine was the blue one. In fact, uh, it's like a light, light blue. I liked it okay. I like the Squire better. It's weird. If, if Fender would make a Fender version of the Jaguar, the Squire Jaguar short scale bass, like this Fender version, I'd probably go for it just because, you know, it's kind of more prestigious to have the Fender sometimes over the Squire. But the Squire is so good. It always, that's, that's another instrument that makes you wonder how much you're falling for the logo. I mean, because it's a great instrument on its own merit. Uh, Gary says, Hey dude, any progress on slap based setup videos? Yeah, they're like I said, they're done. I just didn't have a release. I didn't have them released. So, you know, what I was going to do was I was going to release them right before and right after the Larry Mitchell show video and stuff that I posted and it just didn't get done. Um, uh, 
because the editing time with the uh, sharp my axe took a lot more than I thought it was going to take to get that out. So, uh, Gary, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope that we don't have to ask that question again on the, on the live show. That's so hopefully we'll get it out by next, uh, Friday. So, because I, I, I like I said, I hate saying stuff like this. I hate talking about the release stuff. The, I feel like every time we talk about it on the live show, we just jinx stuff. Uh, okay. And then Ginny, uh, Lude says, Hey, thoughts on the salmon guitars. Took a chance and bought a used UM4 2004 Korean made uh, Samic on reverb shipping now. Uh, shipping now, so I don't have it yet. Hoping and congrats on the show 100 uh, episodes, 200,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, Jenny Lutz. Uh, I'm a big Samic fan. Samic, of course, is like Court. If you know Court Guitar, C O R T, Court and Samic pretty much built. <laughs> you know, 70% of all the guitars that we like that are imported. And so they're, they're one of those brands that, you know, you, and, and because they, uh, what they do when they make their brand, they generally kind of put more quality in their own, own product because it's got to sell on that aspect. In other words, the same like priced item from a name brand, even though they made both guitars, the name brand, let's say for $600 will, uh, and theirs for $600, they will have more options in it because they got to win you over with the, you know, Hey, better for the price kind of logic. So I think there's a lot of, uh, uh great things in the Samic guitars, Samic though, in court, unfortunately, cause they make for everybody just like, you know, all the brands like, you know, Ibanez, somebody saying Ibanez and stuff like that. Um, you know, they have duds out there too. I'm not specifically familiar with that model, but, uh, I definitely loved all of the made in Korea Samic stuff back in the day. It always felt like it was really good stuff. Uh, and I, like, I don't remember them making a whole lot of low end stuff that was out of that, out of that factory when they did that. So, uh, Oh, uh, hero glop. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, that's great. Hero Glob says, "Hey Phil, have you ever have you ever built a speaker cabinet? Maybe a sharp my cab." No, but but Stu Mac liked the video. <laughs> this week's video and Melissa, they they said that was really interesting. They you know they never thought to do a video like that, and uh, they asked me if I would do a sharpen my amp <laughs> where we build an amp. Uh, or something like that. You know, they didn't really specifically say it like that. And uh, I like to always say yes first and then figure it out. <laughs> so that's what I did. So uh, we won't be building a speaker cabinet. We'll be building an amp. So yeah, I have an amp coming that we'll build. So I'm going to build it building a project amp. And then what I thought uh, I would do after I build it is maybe get somebody like Lawrence to mod it and then show you guys the mods that uh, somebody like him could come up for the amp or something like that. So, yeah, but there you go. There's the idea. And that amp, of course, is a combo amp, so it'll have a speaker cabinet because <laughs> it's a it's an amp and cabinet. So, uh, David says, "Hey Phil, you mentioned the bass breaker line of amps. Any issues on the 07? His talking about seven watt uh, bass breaker. Yeah, I had the seven watt bass breaker. I loved the way it sounded, but mine hummed, and I got rid of it for that reason." Uh, the hum wasn't like defective. It's something in the amp. And uh, I've been told by others that it, they have it too, but I've been told by a few every once in a while say they don't, they don't have that issue, but it hummed. It was a weird hum. It's like that transformer hum. And, and it was, so some people don't mind it. Some people did. Um, my whole point though, the thing about a seven watt amp, a little amp like that was, I was playing it really quiet. And so really quiet. I thought the amp was humming louder than I wanted it to be. So there you go. Yeah, Matt says, hey, that's an amazing idea. Yeah, you know, like I said, uh, it's uh, I can tell you right now, with everything I do, it's always, hey, you want to do this? And I always say yes. And then we uh, we try and figure it out. <laughs> so, okay, where's my list at? Uh, oh, okay, so this is on a, uh, a downer. Uh, so, uh, but it's something to mention if you guys don't know. Uh, Jim Dunlop passed away yesterday. Uh, this just really sucks. He Obviously, he was very influential to a lot of our guitar players. He's uh, he's great. I have a video that I did and, and it's uh, I'll put a link. Uh, it's a uh, it's basically how he saved the wah pedal. So, you know, that's what's one of the cool things. Not only did he come up with these all these great ideas, but he actually did save the wah pedal. The wah pedal was going away and um, he brought it back to life. So he's accomplished so much. And uh, I just thought it would be appropriate to, you know, on a on a gear channel to mention, uh, you know, more so than just a guitar player, but just mention 
a gear person. This person made the gear that we love to talk about. We love to own and we love to use, make music with. So uh, thank you, Jim Donlop for uh, decades of amazing stuff and an amazing company and, and uh, you know, uh, much, hopefully much success to Jim Dunlop and the Dunlop uh, companies, the companies in the future. And um, so just thought I'd mention that. And what else do we have? Yep. Uh, Pete's Blue said, rest in peace, Jim. I agree. Um, like I said, just it's always it's always a, a downer. But, you know. Uh, OK, Jeff Harper says. What should you look for in a practice amp? Tube versus solid state. What should you look for? Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't think it's that complicated. It feels like more a complicated question than it is. To me, an amplifier is just like a guitar. You pick it up and it feels and sounds musical or it doesn't. There are so many guitars, and here's why I use this. I don't, I don't look at everything like it needs to be magic. Everybody's like, oh, this amp's magical, or this guitar is the most amazing thing ever. There. I look at the opposite ways. I always think it's weird when they're not even good at all. You pick up some instruments and some amps, you plug into them, just everything is shrill and just nothing feels right. And uh, you know what I mean? So, so when a, a tube amp or solid state amp, it doesn't matter to me. If it sounds good, it is good. Is 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 definitely that is how easy that is. There's just something about some of the solid state amps that are harsh that a lot of us don't love. But there's something about tube amps that some people don't love. So uh, it's as simple as plug into it. If you like it, it's right. Don't worry about the rest. Right. Um, the only physical thing that matters is how much it costs because that that dictates. You know, if you don't have enough money, you're you're kind of in the <laughs> right. It's not an option for you. If you get three hundred dollars on a seven hundred dollar amp, it's just not an option but here's the point the point is don't worry about how they built the amp that's what goes back to that hand wired versus uh you know kind of pc boards the the reason why when i did the uh the video with uh, uh larry mitchell was which is funny because if you guys know i'm not really big axe effects person right but i love and that's part of the, hopefully with the videos too we talk about not everything on the videos uh, especially all the videos i make are my personality or my thoughts they're just observations or things i think are interesting that all those guitar players should talk about or maybe know about i think it's fun larry mitchell and those guys and uh, you know watching all these musicians use these modeling systems it's not really going to make it to where I use a modeling system. It's not something I still feel connected with that way. I love them. Don't get me wrong. They're, they're pretty cool, but I, I, I'm not going to use one. It's I'm still going to be my Princeton amp. It's just going to be that way for me for a long time. But they're the proof that that is as musical as what I love. And so that's what it is. It, you know, find the thing that you love making music on and make music on it. That's as simple as that. And that's why a lot of people, when you suggest something to me, and I like hearing your suggestions, when somebody's like, hey, you should get a Kemper, you should do this. It's not that I don't, it's not that it's digital and I don't like digital. It's, I, I it's, I'm happy with what I have. <laughs> if I plug in, like I said, I plug in, when you can plug into a little one 10 inch speaker, one channel amp and find joy, uh, I don't know how to make it more complicated than that for myself. Um, although I will say this, Larry gave me a much better, much better appreciation for my Helix. I've been using my Helix all week, obviously, because he gave me, and I'll be doing the review of that. But the remember I tell you guys, I wasn't sure how to kind of form that review. Larry helped me because he gave me the piece of advice I needed that I, I was stuck and him being kind of a guru of modeling systems, because that's what he tours with and uses all the time. He gave me a suggestion and not a technical set, uh, suggestion, back to the kind of the emotional state. He told me, he gave me some uh, musical advice. Again, musical equipment is to make music. That is how you have to think about it. Do you make music on it? Do you love making music on it? Does it make you inspire you to make music? That's as simple as it is. Everything after that doesn't matter if it's made of PC boards or tubes or digital effects or whatever. If you can, if you, if it inspires you to make music out of it, it's doing the right thing. Um, but I understand why we have questions like this because it's, it's really confusing. What should you do? But there you go. Uh, Billy Bilo. I'm going to say Bilo. Billy, Billy says thoughts on Gretsch streamliners. I, I like them, although I just got rid of mine. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you guys know, I had a streamliner and well, here's the deal. I had, uh, uh, just let's say this time last year, I had a streamliner Gretsch. I had the electromagnetic Gretsch and I had the pro series Gretsch. I had three Gretsches. That was two Gretsches too many. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I, uh, 
I did the uh, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, right? Um, I, I figured out which one was right for me, and the one that ended up being right for me was Electromatic, and it was based on a couple things. I liked the Electromatic, the way it felt. I liked the way it sounded. It was fine. I liked the price point I paid for it. I don't feel like that was a lot of money invested into it. The Pro was really nice, but I feel like that was a lot of money invested in a guitar that was just kind of getting a lot of dust. Um, and the Streamliner was great, but I just liked the Electromatic just a little bit more. And But... I am very excited about the NAMM show seeing the new streamliners. Did you guys see that they updated them? The updates look fantastic. I would love to check out the new uh, streamliners. Uh, I think uh, anything I had, every critique I had about the old streamliners, which wasn't very many, they flat out improved. So if you guys have not paid attention to that this year, then streamliners have been improved. Better pickups, better features, better colors. Uh, it's just a, a really cool line. I was it was definitely really really uh, an impressive line uh, to to check out. So, and I didn't notice a price increase. If it is, it was probably minor because I didn't notice they were because they were pretty inexpensive. They probably raised a little bit, but you know it, it's not like they're a thousand bucks now or something. Uh, okay. Hey, Bill, uh, Bill uh, Thornton. Hey, Bill, how's it going? He says, uh, happy 100, man. Why doesn't Squire offer any of their strats in the low price hardtail non-tremolo version? Okay, so we've talked about this before, Bill. You know, the funny thing about that is uh, Fender's hardtail strats are like this really interesting thing because everyone wants one until they have one. <laughs> and that's why Fender, I, that's my theory why Fender doesn't make them. I used to always, you know, reiterate to Fender when I would talk to them, like, hey, the customers, they've spoken, hardtail strat. And the reason being, every time you see a hardtail strat, especially older ones, they go for top dollar. And here's what you realize, though. A hardtail, a hardtail has a different feel to the string bend. It has a different feel to the way of the guitar. So really what people, what musicians want is they, they want a a strat but they don't need the tremolo and so the hardtail seems like the right decision but to be honest with you it has a different feel to the guitar so because it has a different feel some people don't like that and they kind of so that's why i think they stay away from it a little bit but also i think it's because uh and that's that's part of the answer the other part of course will always be because fender doesn't have to <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, companies do what they have to fender. will uh, we will buy whatever fender uh, makes. And what reason I say that is we're buying what they're making right now. If we were to stop buying strats because we all wanted hardtails, trust me, they would make hardtails. They soon they, they react to the market and, and the, and the money. So they follow the money. And so, and that's what happens with a lot of these uh, established guitar companies. They do, they do what they want, and as long as we're buying it, they assume that's what we want. So, okay. Uh, now, next question was uh, Inca Fish twenty three. Hey, Inca Fish says, "Cheers, cheers to the one hundred episode." Just uh, upgraded my Squire with uh, Wiggins and uh, Obsidian Wire Kit. Sounds amazing, Chris Sustain. Thanks for the great videos. Thank you, Inca Fish. Uh, my uh, my. Uh, uh, Wiggins set is in my Squire Bullet, and that video is definitely this week. Uh, I pushed it back because I didn't want it to take any of the thunder away from the uh, uh, Larry Mitchell uh, video I put up. Uh, I have a video called uh, something. What's it called? I might as well tell you since I have the answer right here because it's actually made and it's just sitting here. Um, it is called. I'm sure the suspense is killing you guys. It's called something but i don't have it no i do ah here it is okay so what happens on youtube is uh, some of the videos are uploaded on youtube right now they're there i just have to release them and i don't have them released yet and it's called my cheapest versus my most my cheapest versus my most expensive guitar it's where i compare exactly what you think i compare and i explain why i and both these guitars are interesting because unlike you know, a situation where I'm like, oh, isn't this cheap guitar great that I just got? Or this expensive guitar is amazing because I just got it. And it's like, you know, I'm in honeymoon mode. Uh, the cheap guitar I'm talking about, I've had for four years. And the expensive guitar I've had for two and a half. So these are guitars I've had for a while. And that really means something. Because if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know, not everything sticks around here. <laughs> right? Sometimes the stuff goes, you know, I think I love it. It's kind of like, my wife called it honeymoon mode. Honeymoon mode. 
on the guitars, you know, right? She, uh, a friend will ask me, wait, what do you think of that new Strat? I go, I love it. My wife goes, memory still in honeymoon mode. <laughs> She's like, ask him in three months. <laughs> so, uh, these are guitars that definitely, um, uh, so, uh, there you go. Uh, Dennis says your chat got messed up. How did it get messed up? Did you do a chat, a super chat? If you did, we'll figure it out. Uh, okay. What else? I did everything except for we got to give away this jam stack thing. You guys have been hanging out this long and we got to cut this soon because I actually have to go see my daughter perform tonight. This is the jam stack. They sponsored the sharpen my axe so I could make that happen. That, that video was the most expensive sharpen my axe we did. And this thing is cool. Let me show it to you. So I showed it to you guys in that video. If you saw it, it's this cool case. You open it up and what's in here is the Jamstack amplifier that clips on your guitar or you can set it on, you know, on, on a table or something. It also is a Bluetooth speaker system. It has a, a holder for your uh, cell phone if you'd like to do that. Obviously, it's important because you can download apps and use the sounds off the uh, the apps to do this. It's got this cool little pick thing. I know I kind of showed it in the video, but the Jamstack guys, like I said, they were cool enough to sponsor the video. Um, they're, um, so you guys know, just not that it's a big deal. No one asked me, but on the sponsored stuff, I, I don't allow any sponsors except for Sharpen My Axe. Because obviously the Sharpen My Axe thing, as you guys remember, some of you guys uh, have been around for a while, you know that when I did 100,000 subscribers, that's where we came up with the Sharpen My Axe idea. We said, hey, why don't we mod up five guitars? And I paid for those up. Uh, well, pretty much all out of pocket. Uh, Graph Tech sent me a couple things. And you guys said, hey, let's keep going. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. I can't be shoving four and five hundred dollars worth of stuff into people's guitars and paying shipping and doing this stuff. I, you know what I mean? I just don't have it. So uh, so basically I use patron money and that's how we've been doing that. And that's great. But even that gets a little you know, hard. It spreads a little thin on them. So um, for a couple of the videos, like I said, we use a, a Stu Mac for parts and stuff. But what's uh, great, Jamstacks, like I said, they help pay for a couple of the parts. If you saw some Melissa's stuff, the parts like uh, the, the neck cradle and the fat and mat and stuff. And then, of course, the shipping to her and stuff like that. So they help pay for that. I just want to give them credit because that was really cool of them to do that. They're only sponsoring that one episode. Um, it's just the episodes where I, the expenses get a little hard. Uh, I've been asking for companies, hey, if they can help out with those videos because uh you know all that stuff that the companies give me that's the stuff that i give to the person who wins the sharp my axe so it's not like you know it still kills me <laughs> you get the idea okay um so all right uh you know what i'm gonna do the weirdest thing ever and it's because it's my channel and i get to do whatever i want c burgess just put my amp died i could use that jam stack amp is dead fine <laughs> you know what That'll make that easy. You just won a $250 jam stack. Uh, C Burgess, just send me asknewyourgear dot or asknewyourgear at gmail.com. Just send me that, uh, you know, your, uh, your address and stuff. I will ship this out to you sometime next week. I'm very slow to ship stuff out. Everybody who's won stuff for me knows it takes a little while because, you know, I got to pack it up and stuff and my wife ships it out. My wife's fast and gets it done because she's awesome and I'm slow and horrible at this to buff. But again, uh, that was great. This is the one. So, you know, see Burgess, this is the one I actually demoed. This is the one they sent to me to, to, to demo. And I thought, let's give it away as well. That that wasn't part of the uh, sponsorship agreement. I just thought it'd be cool to give it away. So let's give it away. Um, Because I already know I won't play it as much because as much as it, it was cool, I got a lot of amps. <laughs> You know, uh, sometimes you want to spread the joy. So, a uh, uh, bunch of you guys are asking, and we'll, uh, hey, did you not keep your 800? No, it's right here. I love it. It's right here. Uh, no, it just looks cooler with this <laughs> thing. Uh, no, you know what it is? I like the 800 more than the Silver Jubilee, but that doesn't mean that I don't like the Silver Jubilee. I just like the 800 a little bit more. I haven't decided that the Silver Jubilee is going to go. Uh, right now, I'm happy with just when I want to play the 800, I play the 800. When I play that one, I play that one. So, <laughs> so uh, somebody asked me a good question on that too. There was a great question on that video, the video I did where I compared the two Marshalls. Somebody said, Hey, how did your Runt 20 compare to them? I like the Runt 20 better than both of them. So, just thought I thought about making a video, but I'm like, that's just the easiest answer. The Runt 20 me, the distortion's better, the clean is better. It's better. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just like it better. Uh, when I mean better, I mean, I prefer it. I like it better. It, it, it's, I, you know, I don't quantify anything by saying anything's an absolute. Just my opinion is I like it better. Um, 
But instinctually, I just want to own a Marshall because I think any guitar player, I think we're all programmed to want Gibsons and Marshalls, regardless of what really you want one or not. It's just in your head. You just want a Gibson and a Marshall. So, uh, so there you go. I, it's really cool. Uh, all right. Uh, we hit everything on the, oh, you know what? I needed to do a big thank you for Larry Mitchell. Larry wanted me to thank all of you because when we did the video with the live show, which was, he was great to let me do the live show with him. Those of you who of course supporting, but a lot of you guys, I guess, went to his iTunes account, went to his website and bought, downloaded his music, became fans of Larry Mitchell. As you guys know, he's an amazing guitar player. And he just wanted me to tell you guys, thank you so much. I'll put a link in this video. So if you guys want to check out his music, please check it out. He's one of the best guitar players out there. And uh, he's the nicest guy in the world. So, I mean, this is a great combination to have. You know what I mean? That you don't always see. Uh, and uh, that, so I just want to say that because like I said, he asked me to thank you guys. We did all the winners. We discussed everything I think we want to talk about. There's, Let's make sure there's not a super chat I missed because that would be... I don't want to miss anybody. Adrian Smith to do super chat for no reason. Thanks, Adrian. I appreciate that. It was really nice of you. So it's, uh, it's, uh, and then because you did that, let's find one question out there. Yeah. See, Hey, oh, this is not the question. It's just HK says, yep. Gibson Marshall. Yummy. Yeah. You know what it is? It's just, they'll always be Gibson Marshall out there. So, <laughs> and then BJ Danell says, when are we getting Know Your Gear Music swag? Uh, know Your Gear Music win swag. If you got, so I'm sure you're talking about the fact that I have a shirt that says gear is win. And Tyler Larson has a gear is win. I made him a shirt. And, uh, you know, I have one. And uh, uh, never. <laughs> it's I mean, it's just not it's not something we'll ever do. Uh, you know, unless Tyler wants to do it. I don't know. Uh, but it, I made it for him. It would be up to him if he wanted to do something like that. Um, although I will tell you this, cause Tyler's pretty cool when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I don't want to put him, I don't like to push people into a corner at all. Okay. So just letting you out there, uh, maybe I should ask him this privately instead of publicly, but, uh, anyways, it, it, maybe I'll reach out to him if he was willing to do it. If you guys, for those of you that would be willing to have a gear as win, like the music is win gear, I uh, know your gear mismatch shirt, you know, mashup shirt. Uh, I think it'd be cool. I'm sure Tyler would like, if he did it, we could donate all the proceeds the money to a charity because obviously he's he he does a lot of that stuff but he does actually guitars for vets he does guitar for vets too so uh in fact uh, tyler larson has a guitar stand that goes on the side of amp uh and i'm pretty sure 100 percent of everything when you buy those with the music is win logo 100 percent of that goes to guitars for vets so uh it's a so obviously he uses that a charity as well so maybe that's something we can think about i don't know like i said I'll, I'll reach out to him uh personally and see if he's interested in something like that and uh, if you guys want to do that, maybe we can raise some money for a charity. That's always cool. That's a, and then you know what? We'll lead, we'll end on that note. Something else I want to say. Thank you, uh, big thank you to Melissa about Melissa did this really cool thing by the way to say thank you for uh, you know uh, working with the video with me and and of course me sending their videos and, and getting this orchestrated. Melissa made a fifty dollar donation to the Alice Cooper uh, Solid Rock uh, Rock Solid teen foundation in my name so that was really cool uh so uh thank you melissa for that that was awesome so that's a great charity it's one of the ones i use and um it was nice of her it's always cool right that's always a cool gift i know it sounds weird but it's a great gift when somebody sends you like hey we made a donation in your name just i don't know it's just kind of cool um so so there you go and uh uh hannah gun said did i did you miss this did i miss what hannah Hold on, hold on before I go. I don't see. Did it? I don't know what you meant. <laughs> so, uh, but we'll figure it out, Hannah. If there's something I missed, I'll, I'll I'll scoop it for next week. So, all right. On that note, we're gonna go because I have to go watch my uh, daughter perform. So, and then uh, Zim Guitar said, "Check out his yo-yo video." You know what? It's an actually good video. He got uh, uh, Zim's guitar has got. Like all the rock stars at the NAMM show, he got the Billy Sheenan and Mar Michael Anthony and uh, and uh, everybody to to play yo yo. So check that out as well. That was a pretty funny video. I enjoyed it. I laughed. So so all right, guys. On that note, I'm gonna let you go. Brian says, "Congrats on the 200,000 in the hundredth episode." Thank you guys for uh, uh, 
for hanging out with me. There was over 900 of you hanging out. We got to all our subjects. Everyone who won stickers, yo-yos, and the amp, please, like said, send me the email to ask know your gear, specifically with the subject title of what it is that happened. And I'll get back to you guys and get that out, get your addresses and get that out to you. Thank you guys so much. 100 episodes, pretty exciting. 200,000 subscribers, pretty exciting. And Ola sent me a guitar. Sounds like the best week ever. I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And until next time, know your gear.